Hello and welcome to Technology Tuesdays for June 2013 and the topic this month is lecture capture through the iPad. My name is James Moore. You can contact me through the information that you can see on screen at the moment. This month I am working from a problem. The problem is I want to faithfully capture the classroom experience and make that available to students. The question is why I might want to do that. Well, from my experience and my perspective, I think when someone is recorded, they teach better. It's a little bit like having a camera aimed at you and standing up a little bit straighter and acting at your best. I also believe it perhaps can lower the cognitive overload of students. If students are concentrating on recording the classroom experience and making notes, I think that sometimes distracts them from participating in the class and learning. It's also useful for course review and situations where students are absent from class and you want to give them an idea of what was covered that particular week. My perspective here again is what are the sort of solution uh, that faculty choose to use should be both portable and cheap. So historically I've suggested the Sansa Clip which is an mp3 player and recorder. This is a device that uh, faculty can clip to their shirts and that allows you to record the classroom experience. Obviously this is audio only. So if you're somebody who presents in a visual manner, you're using visual materials, then this is a less than um, ideal option. So what I typically do in the classroom nowadays is I'm using my Sansa clip as a backup device and I have a laptop that I present on. To that, I connect a microphone and a Bluetooth wireless webcam, which allows me to record the classroom experience. I also use software on the Mac to record everything that appears on the screen and projector. And the output from that is a split screen in which you see two video channels. And I talk about this in a presentation called Gorilla Lecture Capture. So that's what I do on a laptop using either ScreenFlow or Camtasia. And the idea here is perhaps there's a way that we can approach something equivalent to that on the iPad. The iPad is a popular device for faculty to use in the classroom. Well, I've looked through a couple of options and I think there are basically five directions that faculty could go if they want to record their lecture that they present on from the iPad. So the first is a little bit scary. There is software that you can install on your iPad that works in a similar way to Camtasia or ScreenFlow and records everything you do. The downside to using this software is you have to jailbreak your machine. This is software that is not available in the Apple App Store and you have to go elsewhere. So if you're comfortable doing that, if you're comfortable jailbreaking your iPad, or iPhone, this may be an option for you, and it costs about $5. Option two is to use some of the screen casting apps that are available to you from within the App Store. So here on screen, I suggest seven, and you can see that they're fairly reasonable in price. The majority are free. The two that you have to pay for are either $3 or $4. So I'll quickly sort of run through each of these very briefly. The first is Ask3. This is created by the same people who create Camtasia. Um, it has a nice simple interface to use. It allows you to sort of annotate material or construct three form animations very easily. The downside from my perspective is this software pushes you into the Ask3 portal and that's your interface in which students can look at your recordings. I see that as a less than ideal option. The second app is Dosery. Um, I found the interface that this provides to be a little bit confusing initially. There's a little bit of a learning curve to use this. It has something that the other products don't have, which is a virtual wrist guard. So you can designate parts of the screen that you don't want um, basically inadvertent marks to appear. 
It hides the tool set from student view when you present, which is a good thing. And it exports to Facebook, YouTube, email, or your camera roll. The next is Doodlecast Pro. This, I think, has a very nice, clean interface. It looks, I think, a little bit more professional than some of the other options that are available to you. It also allows you to export your movies to Dropbox, which I think is a convenient way for faculty to create their recordings and they may then maybe edit them after the fact and then share them with their students. So I think that's a, a fairly good option. EduCreation's interactive whiteboard again pushes you into a portal in the same way that Ask3 does. So I don't particularly like that option, but this particular product I think is saved by the fact that you can download, um, sorry, that you can embed videos on other pages. So if you're somebody who wants to create something and then share it with your students fairly quickly, that option can be useful to you. But I don't think it's an ideal situation because again, you're working through a third party portal and your options are basically private or public. Explain Everything has, I think, some very rich export options. The downside here, though, is really your recordings are for one slide only. So it doesn't allow you to move through a sequence of slides and create a presentation. So I think for the majority of faculty, this wouldn't be an appropriate option to use. ScreenChomp is another product made by TechSmith, the people who make Camtasia. So we know that its recording options are, are good. I think it has a very easy, perhaps insanely easy to use interface, which I like. Um, the downside to using this particular product is it's viewed as an experiment. This is a product that's free to use at the moment, but we don't know if it's necessarily going to be around over the long term. So I would caution the use of this particular tool. And then we have Show Me Interactive Whiteboard. This has been around for a while. I think it was one of the earlier sort of screencasting products that's available on the iPad. It has a nice clean interface. And the reason I think this is perhaps useful to faculty is when you export your recording, it appears on a third party website as either a personal recording, so it's private or public. But at that point, you can download this as an MP4 file. So the workflow for faculty could be to export to a personal profile and then download that as an MP4. And from that point onwards, use D2L or iTunes U or some other interface to share that recording with your students. OK, so moving away from the screencasting options, the next option available to you, and this is a flawed option, is using something like uh, an Epifan VGA to USB converter connected to your iPad. This allows you to take the output from your iPad and then convert that into a video channel that can be recorded by Camtasia or ScreenFlow on a laptop. Now, the obvious problem with this is now we're moving away from the nice, lightweight, bring your iPad to class option to the bring your iPad, bring your converter, and bring a laptop to the classroom. So I don't think it's really an option for presentations, but it's something to consider if you want to create recordings at home or somewhere within DePaul. However, option four takes that idea and makes it a little bit more manageable, a little bit more lightweight. The more recent iPads have a software tool, an interface that's called AirPlay. And what AirPlay does is it allows you to mirror whatever appears on your iPad screen on devices like the Apple TV or somebody else's computer. So Air Server or Reflector are two software tools that can be installed on a PC or a Mac that now allows your iPad 
to broadcast whatever appears on the screen to that device. So the way that this could work in the classroom is you have your traditional Podium PC running Air Server or Reflector. You can now walk around the classroom with your iPad wireless and whatever you present on your iPad appears on the Podium PC and from the Podium PC to the projector. So this, I think, is a good option. This is something that I think could work well for the majority of faculty. The only complication is the two devices have to be on the same wireless network. So if you're using a Podium PC, it has to be on the same wireless network that your iPad is on. So anyway, here's an example of how this might work using Reflector. So Reflector creates this sort of frame that looks like an iPad that your students see. So here, we, again, we can use the same screencasting apps that we've seen earlier. But we can also present anything that appears on your iPad. So the obvious limitation for screencasting is you're tied to the particular tool. You're tied to the particular app. You can't leave that app as you're creating your recording. But here using AirPlay, we can jump around and we can use any of the programs, any of the applications that appear on our iPad to share with students. So providing you have Wi-Fi, providing you have software, this I think is a decent direction to go. Option five is a little bit nerdy. This is using a device that you'll see some teenagers using to record the computer games that they play on Xboxes or Playstations or Nintendo Wiis and, and we use. Basically, it's a, a capture card device. This is typically used in the same way the, the Epiphen is, where you connect it from a video source to the capture card to a, a laptop. But the distinction for this particular model, the Avamidia C875LGP, is it records directly to a secure digital card. It doesn't need the laptop. So this is a device that conceivably could be used, but there are a couple of issues. Basically, you have to create this sort of Heath Robinson uh, concatenation of devices for this to record. So on the left, you have your iPad, you have to use a VGA out cable rather than HDMI to bypass the copy protection scheme that the iPad has. So here we output as VGA, we have to add a secondary VGA to HDMI connector. These devices aren't too big, they're typically a couple of inches long, uh, an inch high. They're not big, they're not heavy, but it's an extra complication. And from the VGA to HDMI converter, you can then go into the other media capture device. Now you need to also capture audio. So in the room, you need to have a microphone. So in my example here on screen, I'm using a Zoom H2, which is my microphone, and that is connected to the other media. And that then has an HDMI out cable which you could use to connect to an HDMI connection on your projector, which is um, within most DePaul classrooms. If you didn't have HDMI in the classroom, you'd have to add a second converter, uh, an HDMI to VGA converter to connect to the projector in the room. So as I say, it's a little bit of a Heath Robinson sort of scenario. We have lots of things connected to other devices for this to work. The other downside to this approach is if you are recording directly to SD cards, the files that are created are .ts files. These typically can't be opened with most applications. You will typically have to convert this to something that's more usable like a M4V or a MP4 file. This could be done with Handbrake. Um, so Handbrake is a free and open source software program that you can download from the web. So as I say, can be done, a little bit nerdy, but there are some issues. So that was it. That was Lecture Capture from the iPad. My name is James Moore. If you have questions, please get in touch.